John here. This is part eight of my seven segment LED project uh, design video. We're writing a lot of OpenSCAD here. This should be the last episode of the OpenSCAD development. This is where we're going. This is what, where this episode will end. What we're going to do is we're going to add these brackets to each side. This is the front. These are this, these brackets and these cylinders here are the tongues that will reach into the grooves that mate with the side walls of the back segments. All right, so what do we need for the tongue? The tongue will be just like the groove ex except we won't subtract it from the segment. We're going to add it so we won't put it in the difference. We'll put it down here and make it an implied union. The tongue, just like the groove, has the same kind of symmetry. We can put one on one wall and then rotate it around and put another one on the other wall. So it's basically going to have a very similar feel to the groove, except it's made out of more than one piece. Um, all right, so uh, where I'm going with that is I think we can just copy uh, actually this. It'll start the same way. So let's go ahead and do this. Fix the indentation. This is a shift tab once you highlight it like that to get it to go back to the left. Tongue. Let's fix all of our curlies here. This needs work, but this is roughly what we, the high level structure should be that. <clears throat> and now we're going to start by putting a cube on the side wall to represent the bracket that we need. Uh, okay, so what's the dimensions of that? Well, it's going to be, uh, it needs to be based on the length of the groove, which is this right here. I should have probably created a variable for this, so let's do that right now. GY off, uh, GY, that's not an offset, that's going to be a, um, a dimension. The Y dimension, okay. Okay, so this is the length of the groove. of, jeez, the groove uh, in the you know, length of the groove period. Okay, so that's groove Y dimension. Put that here. That way our cube can use the same value in case we change the length of it. In fact, what we want to really do is come up with the X, Y, and Z dimensions because as we move around, this is going to be more than one cube. We're going to subtract one from another in order to make that inset and so on. So let's figure out what these values are going to be that represent the size of the cube that's going to represent the tongue bracket. So in the X dimension, what it needs to be, it needs to be... Uh, um, X dimension. It has to have a certain thickness. Now, so I want to put a cube here and then I want to like come in and I want to uh, 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 inset it a little bit. So why don't we make it um, outside width minus inside width, which is literally going to be double the thickness of a wall. Then if I put it at the wall, it'll go into the wall as well as inside. So it'll make contact, which is exactly what we want. So this is going to be width uh, well, the uh, cube, yeah, the width, yeah. Uh, the tongue bracket, we know it's going to be used for that, but what is the thing? It's the tongue bracket. The Y is going to be the bracket length. What is the length? Well, that's going to be this again, but not really, because what we really want to do is leave some room because the printer could leave some burrs or something either in the inside of the groove or around the outside of the tongue. So we don't want it to be the exact size. You never make it fill 100% of the space because it never will, because the printing will always have some imperfections of some kind. This is going to be the, geez, it would be nice if I could learn how to spell. Tongue bracket uh, length. All righty. The Z. Z is going to be how high it sticks up and down. Well, it needs to at least go up far enough to reach into the GZ offset, right? Uh, so it would make sense that GZ offset times 2 might be a good way a good first draft of this and it'll we'll have to refine that if we wanted to reach for, we probably actually want the bracket to go up a little bit further so that it's not like just sitting at the very edge but we'll see what happens when we get a good look at it so this is the um, 
the uh, height, the Z, whatever, height of the tongue bracket. All righty, so what are we going to do? We're going to come in here. Uh, it makes sense. We're going to have a couple of items is what we're going to do. So what are we going to do? We're gonna, we need to put our cube in there. What do we need to do? Translate to where we want to put our cube. Well, I'm going to put the cube right against this outside wall. So that makes sense. It'll go to the right by IW over 2. And are we going to move it in Y? No, because it's going to be on center. I'm going to create the cube on center. Uh, so it's 0. And then in the Z, I want to go and put it at the height of the, of the wall. The cube dimensions then, and I know I want it centered. are going to be, uh, la, 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 la. well, X, Y, and Z. That's what those were for. So there's our, 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 our tongue brackets, if we don't have a spastic mouse. All righty. So now i got to remove this section here. Well, that's pretty simple. I'm going to just create another cube. I'll make it just the same size cube. Line these up a little bit. Oops, we need to put a difference in here. Because we want to take the first one and subtract the second one from it. And what are we going to do? We're going to move it further out in X and we're going to move it up in Z. So we're going to move it out in X. But like everything else, remember it has to be recessed a little bit to account for this wall. So let's create some variables that hold these fudge factors. Let's call this one the um, the wall fudge factor. And we're going to back it off about 0.4 millimeters. The tongue is going to have the same thing. Uh, we could probably use the same value, but 0.4 is awful big given how small the tongue actually is. So I'm going to make that one 0.25 millimeters. We'll see how that one goes in a minute. When we put the cylinder on the end of the tongue, I'm going to back it out of the groove ever so slightly. But I'm going to move this cube that I'm subtracting here in a little bit further. So this is going to be IW over 2 plus, I want to make it plus uh, half way over. So that's going to be X over 2, and then minus the wall fudge factor on that. OK, then in Y, I don't do anything in Y. I'm going to go to the same place in Z, and I'm going to go to plus uh, half of the height, so that's going to be z over 2. And I'm going to subtract that. Now, it looks pretty good. You can see these little end things on here because that's in preview mode and it usually messes up those surfaces a little bit. So I just did a full render and there you have the little notch just like we saw where, where, where we're going here. Now, I like to be able to preview without having that. So it turns out, since everything is centered, if we just go down here and just add 1 to Y, because remember, this is the Y dimension, and we go and preview it. Now, we still have a little bit of noise here, because these two surfaces match just right. But the ends aren't going nuts. That's good enough for my taste with the previewer. And it's nice and clean. So that's why we got this little mystery one right there. Doesn't really hurt anything and it, it makes it easier to preview. So that is the bracket. Now we're going to put the tongue on the end of the bracket. That means we need to put a, a cylinder up there. And that's going to go at... What is it? Where, where the heck is that thing going to go? It's going to go to... We need the cylinder to basically be right there, right? So what is that one? That's the X... Oh, what we need to do is put it where the, the same X offset that was used over here. So we actually want to move it over GX offset so that it mates. And then we want to come back by the, by the fudge factor of pulling it. But we don't want it to sit all the way in, like I said before when we defined TFF in the first place. Okay, so that's that guy. Uh, we're going to center it so we don't need to move it back and forth in Y. And then in Z... It's going to go to the same thing we do here, but instead of going up and then coming back inside of the back segment, we're going to go up and then keep going and reach into the back segment. That is where 
the tongue cylinder is going to go, and its size is basically going to be the same thing as this. Let's go ahead and put it on its own line. And uh, that should be absolutely fine. So now we have this. And somebody forgot to rotate the cylinder before, <laughs> before we put it on the, the, um, the, uh, the shape. No big deal. We should have stole this as well when we were copying the cylinder, and that's all that means. All right, now we've got the the cylinder on there. Oh, and we use the uh, okay. So we use the um, as you can see, it reaches over a little bit. We use the eight G Y dim. What we wanted to use is our Y, not this guy, right? We want to make it a little bit smaller. All right. All right, so it doesn't reach too far in there. That looks pretty good. Now, this guy, this is okay. It would probably print okay, but why don't we make this match the height of that guy? So our Z height of this guy is not really big enough. So what we need to do is add another radius to it. Uh, we need to do it for times two, because it's got to go, because uh, this whole thing is centered. Uh, G rad. Yeah, okay, I kind of figured something like that would happen. All right, very good. Now that looks darn right, okay? See, it sort of sticks out. Everybody's happy. And basically, this is ready to go, except for a couple of minor problems. You can't print in the middle of the air like this. This is only like one millimeter. You probably could. Your printer would make a mess underneath here, but that's not really good craftsmanship. So what I want to do is put a rounded thing underneath here. So why don't we go ahead and do that? That's part of the this loop here. So what are we going to do for that guy? I'm going to create a cylinder, and I'm going to stretch it so that it, I don't want to just, I, I could just put a cylinder right here, but I might as well make it, you know, kind of reach down a little bit. So what are we going to do? We're going to translate so that the center of a cylinder can go right there. So I'm going to move over by the IW over 2, and I'm going to put it right there. So let's go ahead and translate IW over 2. Uh, we're going to center it so it's going to be okay in there. And then we got to come up to the bottom of this. Well, we know that this cube was centered here. So if we go up to the GZ, and then we come back down half the height of the Z-axis, that's where it's supposed to go. So it should be GZ minus... Uh, Z over 2, that would give us this 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 point right in there on the wall. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and put a cylinder there. there. Uh, so how big is it going to be? Well, uh, it should be the same size. It should meet this, so the diameter should equal the X size of that cube. The height of this is again going to be the height of the other guys, which is going to be y. Uh, center equals true. And <laughs> it'd be nice to rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, uh, 90, oh, oh. And now we need some facets on there. That's looking pretty good. You could, yeah, this is fine. But, you know, why don't we be a little more cool about it? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's scale it a little bit. Let's stretch it out a little bit in Z. So that will be 1, 1, 1. Five. So now it's a smoother arc. It'll be even easier to print. Your printer will have less of a problem with that. So let's go ahead and make that look all nice. And this is fine. We could go ahead with this, except for one thing that annoys me. My printer, and I'm sure yours will too, when it prints this end, it's apt to get a bit of a blob on there. So it would be nice if we chamfer these edges off, okay? Now remember, we, we've done this and rotated it, so we're really doing both at once when we do this, which is nice. You don't have to replicate all that code. So what I want to do is cut these off. How do we do that? Well, this is the tongue, this guy here, right? Let's go ahead and put a marker on there. That's this tongue. So if I take this and do a difference on it, yeah, oh. 
this is a lot of work. It, only just for the little mounting. This is like as much code for the entire seven segment LED replicated so that we can have a, have a snap on front. It kind of drives me nuts. On the other hand, this is kind of what separates a, a, you know, a, a good project from a mediocre one, right? A little bit of craftsmanship. So let's go ahead and doll this up. I, trust me, if you don't do this, you'll be going in there with a little wire cutter, snipping the little blobs off the ends. It'll be annoying. And you'll kick yourself in the butt for not taking another five minutes to figure out how to do it. So what do we need to do? What we need to do is get two cubes, one here, one there. And uh, it's sort of like, again, this whole rotating and whatnot. We'll end up with a for loop that, that measures the distance up or down or whatever. So let's figure out how to just get one of them in the right spot. All right, so what are we going to do there? Translate. Sort of like the same way we figured out how to get the cylinder center of the cylinder here. We need to figure out how to get the, uh, the edge of a cube here. What I want to do is put a cube like this. So we're going to make this, uh, the origin of the cube over here. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to center the cube this time. What am I going to do? How do I do this? I'm going to move it to that point. So that's the center of where that cylinder was, right? In X, it's going to be there. In Y, will it move? Yes, it's going to come down half of this size of this thing. So it'll be, well, we can go up and do the top one first. Doesn't matter. Y over 2, that's where it's going to be. And in Z, it's got to go up to meet the top of the cylinder. Or is that? No. Yeah, that should be it right there. If not, we'll figure out what the heck is wrong as we go. Let's go ahead and just put a cube there and see what happens. What is the size of that cube? Well, it should probably be the diameter of this tongue. So it would be grad times 2, grad times 2 again, and grad times 2 a third time. So what do we got going on here? I don't know where that thing disappeared to. Oh, there it is. It's right where we wanted it. Uh, it's right on the end of this guy. So, yeah, I forgot to rotate it. Oh, I can also see it's too high, right? So we went, oh, yeah, it's because it's on, uh, I didn't center the cube. The origin of the cube is down in there. So the origin of the cube meets the center of that guy. So when we go up here, we got to back off by GRAD. Now the Z height is correct. And we want to rotate it so that we chamfer that guy. Uh, right hand rule, we're going to rotate it on the Z axis and we're going to go negative 45 degrees, I think. Or positive, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, nothing, nothing, and negative 45. Ooh, looking good. So there we go. That's a nice little chamfered corner right there. Let me just turn this guy off. We get an eyeball on there. Ooh, look at that. Craftsmanship. All right. Well, your friends will be jealous. All right. So now we need to do the one on the other side. So uh, I say we should be able to figure out how to make a little for loop to say go do one there and do one down there. Can we rotate it? How do we do this? We're going to say... Um, uh, if we rotate it, oh, this is beautiful because the corner of the cube is right here. So it's actually symmetric. We can just stick one down there without a problem. So we can go and do this. Yeah, sure. We should be able to say for um, the chamfered Y distance is going to be this guy here. We're going to go north by that amount and south by that amount. And then just put CY in here. There we got it. We got it. And this whole thing is in a loop, so that means we did both sides. At this point, we are 100% ready to print and build our LED. Provided it all fits and I didn't make any mistakes. But we'll find out as soon as I print one. We'll see that in the next part.